I think the first time I felt at home, it was in Philadelphia. I moved into my first apartment with my partner, and that night I had incredible pain, and I ended up having to go to the ER to get my appendix removed. That was July 6, 2016. <laughs> I am Sheila Quintana. I was born in Mexico, and I came to the United States when I was 11 years old with my family when we crossed the border. I'm a community organizer. I am undocumented. I am indigenous. I am queer. I would not call myself American, but I would call myself Philadelphian. Do you want my honest answer? We immigrants, and not just immigrants, and not just in this country, right? Refugees, we're the living consequence of years of violence and displacement through economic and political violence. To this country, what do we mean that it's time to pay up, right? Like after years of imperial, of like hundreds of years of imperialism, here we are. And I think it's different for different immigrant communities, for like an Asian immigrant community, for a black immigrant community, it's very different than it is for Latinx communities, a lot of whom have indigenous ancestry. And I think that should not be lost in this conversation because we talk about immigration in a very myopic way that is very much erasing our collective memory of what has happened and why we're here today. I do not see myself under the American immigrant umbrella. It doesn't resonate with me. It doesn't speak to my experience. I even struggle with the word immigrant. I think it's helpful to name it, right, that we had to leave our countries and we have to come here. I think it's helpful to name it as forced migration because it's not a choice. And also I struggle with the word immigrant because I think it's a disservice to my indigenous ancestors. It resonates with me more to say I'm a migrant, but I think that can also obscure the violence of forced migration. What do we call ourselves? I think the important thing, regardless of what you choose to call yourself, is that it's your choice. As opposed to how narratives that are handed over to us for political purposes that have somebody else's interests in mind. So dreamer is a great example of that. Like I never chose to call myself a dreamer. Actually, I thought I had to. I never chose to call myself an immigrant. I thought I had to, to name my experience. I think the power behind choice is something that we can reclaim and how we name ourselves and the words we use to describe ourselves is a part of that, right? Building the identity of who we are on our own terms and the truth that is ours. Immigrant communities in the United States do so much with little or no recognition. We are an incredibly important part of the labor force. At the same time, are denied every single right that a worker deserves. By and large, immigrant workers are the most precarious workers. And we also contribute like culturally, um, artistically. Our sheer presence as human beings is a contribution. We should honor ourselves, our humanity. We should honor our contributions, however you decide to define them, whether you decide to claim your rights as a worker, whether you decide to claim your rights as a business, small business owner, or whether you decide to claim your rights as an artist. Um, as a human being, we deserve to honor those contributions by fighting for our dignity. Oh my God. What would I say to Donald Trump? I honestly don't know what to say to that question. <laughs> I mean, the thing about Trump is it's not about Trump. So I have nothing to say to him because he's just a symptom of our bigger problems. And it's really important for us to know that. And we should be focusing on dismantling ICE, on getting healthcare for immigrant workers and immigrant families, of making sure that the Pennsylvania legislature doesn't vote to eliminate benefits for children of immigrant mothers. While we need to learn to have conversations to dismantle racism, to dismantle militarism, to dismantle uh, systems that perpetrate poverty and that concentrate wealth in the very few. We should learn to have these conversations with people who support that. And at the same time, I think that um, our energy and our time is better spent bringing together the people who are not benefiting from what's happening right now, which is the vast majority of the country, across race and across gender and across nationality and immigration status. Anything you want to add? No. <laughs> <laughs>